Welcome to the House of Jacob Bible study class. Uh, the title of today's lesson is Prophesying, Speaking, the Holy Ghost, Prophesying and Speaking in Tongues. Excuse me. Uh, teaching today's lesson is Bar Brother Martin. I'm your reader, Dwayne. And now I turn it over to Brother Martin. I'd like to thank you, Brother Dwayne, for the introduction. And I'd like to say good afternoon to all the sisters and brothers here at the House of Jacob and welcome to any visitors we may have. As always, sisters and brothers, it is a pleasure to stand before you, and uh, today we're going to carry on with the commandment of God. Today we're going to, you know, I pretty much try to deal with lessons that I haven't heard in a while, and I know uh, the speaking in tongues had not been done in a couple of years, so I decided to deal with this. In fact, like the brother said, the title of today's lesson is, The Holy Spirit Prophesying and Speaking in Tongues. And the reason I chose this lesson is, when you talk to certain individuals, some people might say that if you do not speak in tongues, you do not have the Holy Spirit. We're going to find out that is simply not true, sisters right. and brothers. It is not. You know, the Spirit of God, if the wells and all of, if we are keeping his word. And speaking in tongues is just a gift. And because there are many gifts with this body of Christ, many gifts. And we're going to read some of them. But without further ado, we're just going to go straight to the scriptures. We're going to deal with this when they first, you know, because some churches, they are set up on speaking in tongues. Because if you do not speak in tongues, you can't go to their church. They think something wrong with you. So you got to say something. But we're going to find out what this tongues, what these tongues really are. We're going to go to Acts, the second chapter, where they get speaking in tongues from. Acts, the second chapter. You know, I always read this, but it's so ironic. They'll read the part where you got to keep tongue. They say you got to keep tongue, but they don't pay no okay. attention to what day they doing That's it right, on. brother. The same people that say you have to speak in tongues to get the Holy Ghost is the same people that say you don't have to keep the day of Pentecost. Well, if you got the Holy Ghost in you, you ought to know that you have to keep the Pentecost. Yes, sir. Because that is the commandment of God. That is one is high in holy days that he commands all people to keep. Because that day represents something. But we are not dealing with the day of Pentecost. We're just dealing with what happened on the day of Pentecost. Go to Acts 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Acts 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get up over there, uh, Dwayne, go ahead and read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. You mean to tell me they wasn't in the upper room? No, sir. <laughs> because that's what everybody say. They was in the upper room. Yeah, they was in the upper room earlier. But they had in one accord in one place here. Go ahead and read. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And now all of a sudden it's on the day of Pentecost. They're in one place on one accord. And then you had this wind rushing in where they was at. Go ahead and read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And then you get them fiery tongues fall on the ones that were sitting in that one place. Go ahead and read. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So now they were filled with this Holy Ghost. And then they started to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So you got a Holy Ghost in them that went in them. And then you got a Spirit telling them what to say. That's right. Because that is what's here now. Because you can also call this Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit. Because they're one and the same. Ghost and Spirit is one and the same. And we're going to show you that in this lesson. But go ahead and read. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So we had Jews from every nation, just like we got black people in every nation now. But they are just called Jews then. And they were from every nation in Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. And when this was noised ab abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now, all these brothers from these different nations, they heard the disciples speaking in their language. You know, you had some Greeks there. You had some Romans speaking Latin. You know, you had all these different nationalities there, pretty much like you go today. 
You go to some of these islands, you got Israel speaking different languages, speaking French. You even go in Russia and they speak in Russian. They are all over the place because that is what the Lord said he was going to do to this people. He is going to scatter them out over the whole world. Go ahead and read some more. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Now, the first thing they knew, they knew that they didn't speak no other language. They said, hey, man, ain't all these Galileans? What are they doing speaking in our language? Go ahead and read. And how hear we every man in our own tongue when we were born? Go ahead. Par 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 Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, per Persia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. So you had Jews and you had people who had been converted. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying to Judaism? They were already there. You had people there, but they were all Jews, but they were from all these different countries. But they all heard them speaking in their language. Because we're going to find out that's what these tongues are. It is a language. Because this stuff that they speak nowadays, it, it's not a language. That is foolishness. I'm going to tell you that now. Amen. Because you go in all sorts of the world, you have never heard that language that they call tongue. I think my baby, my grandbaby taught it, said it when she was a young child. That's about it. But other than that, hey, that is not a language. Just listen to them sometime. You think I'm playing turn on the TV tomorrow? You're going to have a few of them on there speaking them tongue. But it is not a language. Go ahead and read. Verse 11. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they was telling them the works of God. Yes, Go ahead and read. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Because they didn't believe it. Because they knew they was Galilean. These weren't no smart brothers. What they doing speaking in our language? So you know how typical Israel do. This is what they do. Go ahead and read. When they see the impossible, this is what they do. Go ahead and read. Others mocking said... These men are full of new wine. And they, you know, Israel, you know, man, them guys drunk, man. Mm -hmm. They just babbling. It's just a coincidence. They babbling the language we speaking. But they drunk. Go ahead and read. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. First thing Peter said, hey, man, you listen to me. Let me make this clear right now. Go ahead and read. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's just nine in the morning. We ain't got no wine yet. We're going to get some because it's the day of Pentecost, but we ain't got it yet. That's right. Go ahead and read. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So what did they start? What did he start? He said they were speaking the word of God. Because when you speak in tongue, you are speaking the word. You are giving a message from God. See, and that right here is when the last days begin. This was around 30 A.D. So that was when the last days begin. Because we in the last, we in, we in them last days. That's when it was start. Because after Jesus went to that grave, that's when the last days started. And he came up. Go ahead and read. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in, in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. See, you know, and nobody pays attention to this part right here. He said, on my servants, on my servants and on my handmaid, I will pour out my spirit on. He said his servants, not everybody. Because everybody ain't God's servant. How you tell who God's servant is is the one that's being obedient to his word. Yes, you understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and finish that. Go ahead. Verse 19. And I will show wonders in heaven above and, in sign, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Uh -huh. The sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord comes. So he started from the, from the beginning of the last days until the coming of the Lord. Yes, because this is what's going to happen when the Lord comes. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that is true. 